Switching, switching, switching. Everybody is switching to DaVinci Resolve, and rightfully so. Or is it? Most of the people that I've noticed are actually switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci. And honestly, that makes sense. Resolve is super powerful. But you know what they say, with great power comes great complexibility. As a video professional, I do video content every day. I create videos for clients, brands, large and small businesses, editing, motion graphics, 3D animation, you name it. So my needs are pretty hefty. And DaVinci Resolve is one of those tools that I use for client work, along with Final Cut Pro, Avid, Premiere Pro, specifically for editing. And if you're considering switching to Resolve, there are some great reasons to make the switch. But I would say that there are also great reasons to switch to or stick with Final Cut Pro. It comes down to which reasons are more compelling to you. Do you want a more technical workflow or do you want one that's more streamlined? Here's the thing, I love and hate DaVinci Resolve. It's frustratingly fantastic. Resolve is anything but easy to use. Sure, it has some great things like the magic mask, powerful graphics and compositing, amazing color grading and audio tools. But I am curious to see how many of these switchers will actually switch back after a while. I have been using Resolve professionally since version 16. And don't even get me started on the color grading and the audio tools and the noise reduction. They're all fantastic. But it frustrates me too often to make me want to use it exclusively. Technically, it's a great tool. But that's the biggest frustration that I have with it. It's too technical. And it feels like there are many steps needed to do even the simplest of things. And you have to make so many deliberate decisions before you start editing because some of them are actually really hard to change later on and they will affect the work. You have to set the timeline and project parameters which you can't change later. Which color space are you working in? Adding drives and locations. Too often I just feel too frustrated even before I made my first edit. Now granted, all these things are important to have a smooth workflow down the line. Whereas on the other hand, Final Cut feels too simple and most of the decisions are made for you. And you have to go and then change those settings to gain some of that control back, where the media is stored or where the app actually functions. It does feel like these two apps are coming from the opposite ends of the editing spectrum. Listen, I get it. DaVinci is a powerhouse of built-in features. It has everything you could need for post-production, but does it actually make the process faster? Render speeds aside, because Final Cut and DaVinci are on par when it comes to rendering and performance. But that's not the speed I'm talking about. I would classify Final Cut as a creative editing tool with drag and drop simplicity. And DaVinci, I would classify as a technical creative editing tool because it forces you to really understand color space, media management, project setups, frame rates, and other technical aspects of post-production and delivery formats for high-end production standards. Things that the majority of people will never need to know, specifically if they are creating for YouTube exclusively. That is why you really need to consider why you want a specific editor. Do you want to be mostly creative with some ability to adjust the image and sound and jump into the edit and get the video out as fast as possible? Or do you need something that is more technically accurate for a standard specification? Or simply put, are you creating for YouTube or a feature film? So let's take a look at a comparison between Final Cut and Resolve to help you better decide which is best for you and if you really do need to switch. Let's get this out of the way. Color grading. Resolve is renowned for its color grading capabilities, offering industry standard color correction and grading. While Final Cut has color correction features, they are not as extensive or robust as Resolve's. But there are plugins for Final Cut that try to make up the shortfall, like Color Finale or Cinema Grade. But even the most seasoned Final Cut users will use Resolve to do their final color grade. Final Cut and Resolve are both professional video editing software, but they do have some key differences. So first and foremost, platform compatibility. Final Cut is exclusive to macOS and Apple, while Resolve is available on macOS, Windows, and Linux. So this makes Resolve way more versatile for users working on different platforms. It also has the advantage of being able to collaborate with more users. The next one is the interface. Final Cut has a more streamlined and I would say intuitive interface compared to Resolve, making it easier for beginners to learn and to navigate. Resolve's interface is more complex with a potential huge learning curve, but it does offer more advanced features for customization compared to Final Cut. 
but oh man, does it have a lot of buttons. And if I wasn't already comfortable with it, it would feel daunting at first glance. For instance, so many people just skip right over the Fusion page and pretend like it doesn't even exist. For workflow and organization, FunnelCut uses the magnetic timeline, which I personally find to be phenomenal. Automatically adjusts and moves clips based on your editing actions. And this can lead to more efficient editing. I can drop clips right into the timeline and just start editing. Whereas Resolve uses a more traditional track-based timeline that way more people are familiar with. But for anyone that is just learning, it can feel overwhelming. And the many steps to start editing can throw many people off with pop-ups that have many options that aren't straightforward to decipher if you are not familiar with them or not a technical person. But when it comes to the organization and media management, I find both are equally good and bad in the way they handle them. Resolve uses the more traditional bins and folder structure, while Final Cut uses events and keywords. And Resolve has taken all these huge modalities of editing, motion graphics, color grading, and audio engineering, and put them all into one app, but left the complexity for each of them. Whereas Final Cut has tried to strip away all the complexity and make it as simple as possible for the vast majority of users with the ability to expand on it. Both these apps actually integrate really well with other software. They do come with a lot of built-in effects, transitions, but if you want to get the most out of Final Cut, you need to get third-party plugins. Whereas Resolve, on the other hand, offers built-in visual effects and motion graphics capabilities through its Fusion module, reducing the need for any external software, and that, by far, is superior to Final Cut Pro. But again, you do lose the ease of use with all of them. Both Final Cut and DaVinci have a growing list of templates and plugins that you can use to expand the app, which is great. Another big one is audio editing, and Final Cut does offer Logic Pro, and there's a round trip they have to use. It's a companion app, but on the surface, it is very limited and very simple, where Resolve has a way more advanced editing tool called Fairlight, which offers way more in-depth audio editing and mixing capabilities. But again, the learning curve is huge, and this is going to be a running theme through all the aspects. And recently, something that Final Cut was actually missing was a built-in tracker. And I would argue that the Final Cut method is actually easier to use. If you want to track something to a person or an object, it's actually quite easy. Resolve is more precise, but it gets complicated very fast. Unless you're a motion graphics animator, you'll want to use templates to add graphics. And templates are usually really well designed, and all you do is change the font and add your colors. And the thing that has made Final Cut so attractive to so many people is that there has been a huge library of templates that are well designed and customizable. Sites like Motion VFX, Video Hive, and Motion Array, and others, you can build your whole broadcast package look and feel with just a few adjustments. Resolve is starting to catch up with really good templates, but again, if you're looking for ease of use, you have to get past the complexity of Resolve to use them really well. At this point, performance of Final Cut and Resolve have been optimized for Mac OS. Now, it's great that Resolve works on other platforms and on the surface works great on most machines. But once you start layering on effects and higher level processes, this may require a way more powerful machine to run all that smoothly. One of the biggest reasons Resolve is really turning the corner with a lot of editors is the price. Final Cut is a one-time purchase of $300. There is a 90-day free trial, but typically it's priced around $300. DaVinci Resolve offers a feature-rich free version and a full advanced feature paid studio version for the same price of $300. The free version of Resolve is a great starting point for those looking to try out professional video editing without the financial commitment. Another big place that both Final Cut and DaVinci have a great similarity is the amount of great tutorials available, both free and paid. For instance, Blackmagic has free tutorials and training right on their website that goes over the fundamentals. And there are numerous great YouTube channels that cover all the aspects of the app such as Casey Ferris, Jamie Fenn, Mr. Alex Tech, Learn Color Grading, and Donna Did It. For Final Cut Pro, you have Peter Lindgren, Ryan Nangle, Ripple Training, Larry Jordan, The Dillons, Dylan Bates, the Final Cut Bro, 
and Dylan John, Brad West, Matthew O'Brien, Tom Buck, Serge M, Tyler Stallman, and Jan Jagger. These are just a few that I like for DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. And if you're just getting started, Motion VFX has a free Final Cut Academy and DaVinci Resolve Academy. Just find the ones that resonate with you and start there. This one here is one of the biggest uncertainties, future proofing. Currently, Resolve feels like it's being handled with care and love by Blackmagic. They really seem to be pushing it to be better and better every single year, adding features, requested features, optimizing for more and more hardware. They just seem to love what they're doing. Where Final Cut seems to be in a constant state of, it's good enough, why change it? And that's a very dangerous place to be for an app. At this point, it can go either way for Final Cut Pro. So I'm really hoping that Apple does show that they're gonna be moving forward positively with it. Ultimately, the choice between Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve depends on your specific needs, preferences, and hardware. Both software options have their strengths and their weaknesses, and it may be worthwhile to try them both out before committing to one or the other. Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve can both produce award-winning work. One has to work harder to get there, and the other, you have to work harder to get there. And if you're considering the switch, choose your hard. It really does come down to ease of use and if that's important to you. But here's the truth. Nobody cares what tool you use. If you limit yourself to only one tool, you're wasting your time. Learn all the tools that you can. Why would you wanna slow yourself down by only sticking to one tool if another tool is better at something else? For instance, you wouldn't animate in Photoshop. You could, but why would you? Don't limit yourself to any one tool. There are some great ones out there, except for Premiere Pro. That program is dead. It just doesn't know it yet. So check out this video where I go over all the reasons why Premiere Pro needs to change if it doesn't want to get killed off for good. Also, I live stream on my second channel where I deep dive on the creative process, as well as freelance financials. As always, thanks for watching.